day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about Ferrari. And is Ferrari stock a buy now? This stock was suggested on the last video, Vladimir Karichkenko, uh, I'm guessing that's a Russian name, suggested, is Ferrari stock a buy? And here I am today breaking this one down. So leave me in the comment section what stock you guys would love to see broken down in next week's video, and I may just do that. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoy these videos, and let's get right into this, guys. So first off, we gotta assume we don't know what Ferrari is. I'm, I'm gonna guess probably 98% of you guys watching this know what a Ferrari is, or have seen a Ferrari or whatnot. But let's just go through some basics on what Ferrari is. They were in the 10K section on the annual report on the Ferrari website. Ferrari is among the world's leading luxury brands focused on design, engineering, production, and sale of the world's most recognizable luxury performance sports cars. Um, then it goes on to talk about, you know, their cars and whatnot. The next paragraph down, we believe our cars are the epitome of performance, luxury, and styling. We currently sell seven models. They, then they go and talk about the models they sell the seven models in 2015 we shipped 7664 cars that's not very many at all and recorded net revenues of 2.8 billion euros and a net profit of 290 million euros we pursue next paragraph down now we pursue a low volume production strategy in order to maintain a reputation of exclusivity and scarcity among pursuers of our cars and deliberately monitor and maintain our production volumes and delivery wait times to promote this reputation. So basically, Ferrari is probably the leader in, in luxury sports cars in, in the world. They're just a fabulous company. They've been around since the 20s, and they've kind of built the business out throughout time. And this stock is a stock that just went public Pretty recently, a little over a year ago, Ferrari goes public with ticker symbol, which is probably the best ticker symbol ever, race. I mean, how perfect is that ticker symbol for Ferrari? That's so awesome. So they went they went public back in October 2015, so about a year and three months ago or so. So this is a pretty new company relatively to the public markets. So let's go in and dig some deeper here. So first off, they have global market share of 24% for the luxury sports car market. That's a high number because there's a lot of luxury you know, sports cars companies that have 24% market share globally. That's very impressive. Europe, they have 23%. Americas, they have 22%. Greater China, 30% market share. Are you kidding me? That is extremely impressive. Rest of APAC, 30%. So we see Ferrari here is very dominant in China, very dominant in, in the Asia Pacific region. So those, if they could ever get to a 30% market share globally, that would be very impressive. But even at a 24%, that's that's extremely impressive. They're they're kicking butt and taking names, you know, for the for the luxury high-end sports car space. Very impressive. So, how many units do they actually deliver per market? So, we see the UK, 740. Then we talks about Germany, Switzerland, uh, Italy, and whatnot. France, Americas. Look at that, 2,640 deliveries. By far, their biggest market is the Americas. I mean, the next closest market is it would be the UK, and we're talking about triple up numbers on America versus UK. Greater China, 610 units. Greater China is a very important market for the luxury sports car market because that's the fastest growing market in the world. So China is absolutely a, a, you know, a country that Ferrari has to pay attention to and basically every single one that's playing in the space because it's just growing so fast. And I wouldn't be surprised if 10, 20 years, China is a bigger market for Ferrari than actually the Americas, which would be very surprising. So let's talk about, so client relations here it talks about, and I saw some very interesting things. So first off, it talks about how they basically don't directly market. They basically have their Formula One teams, and that kind of brings people into the Ferrari brand and whatnot. But the most important paragraph here is, secondly, we target existing and prospective clients seeking to promote clients' knowledge of our products and their enjoyment of our cars both on the road and on the track, and foster long-term relationships with clients, which is key to success. Listen to this. In 2015, approximately 59.5% of our new cars were sold to Ferrari owners. 
So basically 60% of their sales are basically getting to repeat customers who already own a Ferrari. I, I saw that and that blew me away. Because you're talking about high-end cars, and to have basically more than one out of two people that are actually buying a Ferrari to be ones that already own a Ferrari, I think that's extremely impressive. And extremely impressive for the, the brand and the company to have that type. I mean, they're not selling cheeseburgers or something. They're selling $300,000, $400,000 cars. So to have that type of repeat customer, I think is very impressive, and I think it shows that People really love Ferrari once they buy a Ferrari, and they're very likely to buy another Ferrari. Look at that. 60% of the people that have bought one Ferrari buy another Ferrari. So that's very impressive. I saw that, and that just blew my mind here. Next up, now we're kind of talking about the risk factors section. The risk factors are so important to look at in the annual reports. We may not succeed in preserving and enhancing the value of the Ferrari brand, which we depend upon to drive demand and revenues. It's a very important sentence here because basically when you're any type of luxury goods company, whether you're a luxury handbag maker, a luxury car company, whether you're a diamond company, whatever, when you're in that highest, highest of the end space, you have to absolutely preserve your brand and you have to kind of limit how many products you put out there and you have to always have a very high price and you can't really do discounting. Because otherwise that hurts your brand. So Ferrari's got to always keep that in mind, even as a public company and pressure might come on them for, for short-term profits. We know how the, the stock market works. You know, if you don't come through one year and your profits are down and whatnot, your stock usually gets killed. So how's Ferrari going to handle all this now as a public company? That's my big question because I've seen a lot of companies that are public companies and were luxury companies fail. Coach is a perfect example. Michael Kors is a perfect example. Two brands that that just went bonkers and they got to focus on trying to reach profits and reach revenue and trying to build and build and build and show the strong growth that they ended up kind of killing their brand names. With the Coach name is not nearly as respected as it was, say, 10 years ago. The Michael Kors name has lost a ton of respect from, you know, because they did so much discounting. I remember I'd go to outlet malls or wherever and, you know, they would be handing out 50 50% off the handbags and then you get another 25% off and all this garbage and a handbag that says on the tag $300 ends up only being like 75 bucks or something like that. So everybody ended up having a coach bag or a Michael Kors bag and it hurt the brand name. So Ferrari's got to make sure that they never get too focused on producing too many cars or trying to cut prices or things like that just to um, basically have short-term profits come through or, or show short-term growth and those kinds of things, guys. So very important. It's hard to do as a public company because you get under a lot more scrutiny as a public company versus a private company. Okay, next up here in the risk factors. If we are able to un, uh, to or if we are unable to keep up with advances in high performance car technology, our competitive position may suffer. I just highlighted this because I just happened to watch. I was doing research and research on this stock, right? And I typed in Tesla versus a Ferrari into YouTube. I watched this video and the Tesla smoked the Ferrari. It wasn't even like close. <laughs> the Tesla was like up here. The Ferrari ended up catching up toward the very end and passed it, but it just got absolutely smoked by the Tesla. And I just look at any type of like sports car maker and whatnot. And I would love to have, a, you know, one of these type of cars. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like, look at them and I'm like, how you've been building these cars for 80 something, 90 something years. You couldn't figure out how to beat an electric car that just came out of nowhere. You know, these Teslas are like family sedans. It's like I was a sprinter in college, right? It would have been like if I had to like got beat by some 40 year old guy who comes out there and runs casually once in a while. And he's like, Hey, you want to race? And he ends up beating me and I got to try my hardest to beat him and whatnot. I just think it's hilarious that these Teslas killed all these sports cars. But anyways, that's a subject for another day. I just wanted to highlight that real quick. Okay. So this next paragraph here is, is it's kind of like a double edged sword for ours facing our low volume uh, strategy may limit potential profits. A key to our appeal of the Ferrari brand and our marketing strategy is the aura of exclusivity and the sense of luxury, which our brand conveys. A central facade to this exclusivity is the limited number of models and cars we produce 
and our strategy of maintaining our car waiting list to reach optimal com combination of exclusivity and client service. Our, <coughs> excuse me, our low volume strategy is also an important factor in the prices that our clients are willing to pay for our cars. Regulation also affects our potential for volume growth because we are eligible for certain exemptions to fuel economy and emissions requirements provided that we sell less than 10,000 road cars worldwide per year. So this is big time here guys because basically Ferrari is kind of like a, a kind of like a double-edged sword effect kind of going on it, right? They can't produce too many cars one because they can't hurt their brand. So they have to keep the the volume low. They also can't produce too many cars because they need to basically stay under the government, uh, you know, whatever they call it, regulations or whatnot. So they can't really produce more than 10,000 cars a year. Right now they're producing about 8,000 cars a year. So basically, Ferrari's stuck in a situation where they're not going to ever be able to really grow units very big, in my opinion, because... Of basically what we're looking at here. So growth will always be limited to a certain extent on Ferrari. It's not like this one can just grow forever and ever and ever. Unless they went down to low-end cars or something like that, and then that would kill the, the reputation, the brand, and everything. So Ferrari's limited. So I think this is something very important to kind of pay attention to with Ferrari and kind of understand that they're not going to be able to, you know, start selling 50,000, 100,000 Ferraris a year because it would hurt their brand, one, and two, because they couldn't do it because of environmental reasons. So something very important to pay attention to here. Next thing up here, this is a competitive thing. McLaren sports car sales double in 2016. McLaren is a name synonymous with motor racing excellence with eight Formula One constructors champions and 12 drivers championships. But over the past five years, McLaren has been finding success off the racetrack and on the street by building street legal high performance vehicles handmade in the UK. Last year marked a banner year for the relatively young car maker, which is, like they said, about five years. Globally, McLaren sold over 3,200 cars. So we're talking about almost half of what Ferrari sells. A big jump from approximately 1,600 cars that sold in 2015. But in North America, the automaker topped 1,000 cars sold for the first time, representing growth of over 100%. This McLaren company has just come out of nowhere and built a huge reputation. I always remember hearing about McLaren and watching Formula One as a kid and whatnot. Never really thought of it as a, as a competitor to Ferrari in the, in the actual real world as far as on the street and whatnot. So this is big time. And then I was like, McLaren, I think I saw McLaren in a music video that was kind of uh, slightly popular. Oh, the weekend Starboy music video has over a half a billion views in less than four months it's been out. By this time next year, we'll have well over a billion views. Well, guess what? About a minute of the video is spent with him driving his McLaren around the hills of California. I think this is huge. Driving a McLaren on one of the most popular, if not the most popular music video of the entire year. And the guy's driving a McLaren around. I think that's a big thing for, for Ferrari. That seeing that, you know, one of the coolest artists out there, one of the biggest name artists is driving McLaren in his music video. That The weekend should get, like, free McLarens for the rest of his life for that plug. Why didn't he wear a GoPro on his head? Then that could have increased GoPro sales, my investment. Anyways, that's a subject for another day. So that's big time, guys. I don't know if McLaren paid him to be in that video or if it just happened to be, but holy, holy smokes, McLaren got a lot of free advertising with that, let me tell you. So let's look at some numbers here. Ferraris is posting very respectable numbers here. Very impressive. We're looking at the left-hand column for the nine months ending uh, numbers here. So shipments up 8%. Net revenues up 8%, EBITDA up 10%, adjusted EBITDA up 11%. Um, then we go down to net profit a few lines down there, up 23%. Adjusted net profit up 23%. Earnings per share up 23%. Adjusted earnings per share up 24%. Then we go on to the next page here and look at some of their revenues over for the last nine months. Cars and spare parts was up 4%. Engines is was up 31%. By the way, engines category, they sell engines to Maserati. So Maserati basically has Ferrari engines in them. 12% up for sponsorships, commercial and brand, and 9% up uh, overall. 
or excuse me, 9% up for other, 8% up overall. So we see Ferrari is just a growth beast as far as right now at least. They're growing fabulously. And the thing I like a lot is they're actually growing profits much more quickly than they're growing revenues. So that's something I really look at in a lot of companies. You know, if you can grow profits at a much faster rate than revenues, that's good because the bottom line is what matters in the end. What are you actually making? Not just what are you bringing in? So very important, very impre impressive by Ferrari here. So let's look at this balance sheet here. So this balance sheet's actually pretty good for a car company. They have $286 million in cash, no short-term investments, about $53 million in long-term investments. Now we're going to go down to liabilities down there. They have short slash current long-term debt of $631 million. And a few lines down there further, they have no long-term debt. So they have more debt than, than cash and whatnot, about a, about a two to one ratio more debt. That is freaking phenomenal for a car company. If you ever looked at car company balance sheets, a lot of them have five, 10, 20 times more debt than they do cash and investments, guys. So to only have basically a two to one ratio for a car balance sheet company, that is freaking phenomenal. So well done, Ferrari. That balance sheet is blessed by me as a great balance sheet because of the sector you're in. Next up here, let's look at some of these statistics and things here, guys. So right now, it's very close to its 52-week high. It closed out at $59 and some change. Yeah, look at that. It hit all the way down to $31 in the 52. Man, what I like to buy in there. Right now, it's almost at the 52-week high. Market cap of $11 billion, P.E. ratio currently of 31. They pay a small dividend, just under a 1% yield. Not bad. And they have a forward P.E. of just under 25. So with Ferrari, would I say it's a buy? I would say it's pretty dang close to a buy. If this stock could drop around the $50 range, right now it's at about $59 a share. If it can drop down to about $50, I would absolutely start buying it. If it could go to, I don't know, about $45, I would probably put the stock in my top three stocks I was buying now. Because what I love about Ferrari, they have a great brand. I'm big on brand. And they're very profitable. And they're growing profits at a much better rate than they're actually growing revenues, which I think is a very great sign. A very, very great sign. Also, what I like about Ferrari is, I mean, they pay a small dividend. Yeah, that's nice. And they're definitely going to be able to increase that over, over time. But the balance sheet, that's a phenomenal balance sheet for a car company. Like I said, car companies usually have pathetic balance sheets. They're horrible. Do you have a balance sheet like they have? They're in a very, they're in a very strong financial position with a very strong brand. So I look at Ferrari. I like it. I just don't, I wouldn't start buying at $60 right now. I would let it drop to about 50 if it does, of course. It might never drop to 50 again. We'll see. If it does, I'll start dabbing my toe in. 45, that's when I start going in heavy because I like this company. I like it for the long term. They have competitors like McLaren coming in competing, but Ferrari knows how to manage this brand. It's been doing it for decades and they've done it fabulously. Let me know in the comment section if you guys think Ferrari stock is a buy. I would love to hear from you guys. Also, let me hear what you guys have to say for what stock you would love to see broken down on next week's video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you came across this today and you have not subscribed yet, you may want to. We talk personal finance in the channel, entrepreneurship. I'm a business owner. I give away a lot of my business tips. And we also talk the stock market the most in this channel, including this series every single week. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.